So Dr. Masa Okasan is a principal research engineer for the Advanced Television Systems Research Division of the NHK Science and Technology Research Labs. This year, Dr. Masa Okasan received the Society of Information Display Special Recognition Award for his contributions to the develop, development of a wide color gamut UHD TV display system and gamut metrology. Today, he'll be talking to us about a real-time measurement of UHD camera modulation transfer functions, and this is cool. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Um, I'm glad to have this opportunity to give a presentation here today. Uh, it's the second time for me to be here, so I'll thank Bill and uh, the other committee members for selecting my presentation for this great conference. Um, I'm working at NHK r and and um, I mainly involved in the wide color uh, gamut system colorimetry, and uh, I provided an initial design of the RGB primaries for REC 2020. And three years ago, I gave a presentation on color management for REC 2020, including the camera spectral sensitivities and the gamut mapping algorithm. And I also researched in a, a wide gamut display design and uh, gamut side methodology. And I guess many people think the REC 2020 standard is a standard for wide gamut, uh, but the standard also specifies the um, uh, ultra high definition pixel formats so for K and 8K. So today I talk about um, uh, spatial resolution and the camera MTF measurement. So I I performed the subjective assessment to quantify the reliance uh, for images at the various angular resolutions and that of their real object counterparts using the paired comparison procedure. And both images and the real objects were viewed through a synopter which cancels the binocular disparities. And the, the images uh, were reproduced to have the same uh, brightness, same color, uh, same size, and same perspective to the real objects. And the re results show that the realness of the images uh, increased steadily as the angular resolution increased up to around 60 cycles per degree, where after it gradually approached that of the real objects. That is the rationale for the use of 8K for visual realness, but these uh, results are effect effective when the modulation transfer function, or MTF, um, is good. So I'll take, talk about the criteria in detail. So spatial resolution of UHD matters. The UHD relies on the spatial resolution characteristics beyond those of HD to offer a lifelike visual perception, the quintessence of UHD. The spatial resolution is the ability of an imaging system to capture or render fine detail. It is not the same as addressability or pixel resolution because no imaging system is perfect. The, the MTF, uh, the modulation transfer function, describes the magnitude of the response of an optical system to sine waves of different spatial frequencies. And the, this figure shows a typical MTF curve. The MTF decreases um, as the spatial frequency increases in general. And MTF is a reliable indica indicator of the spatial performance. In MTF measurement, the 
the imaging system under consideration is required to be approximately linear and shift invariant. However, the sampled imaging systems are shift variant, so we assume that the object being imaged has spatial frequency components with random phases that are uniformly distributed with respect to the sampling sites. So we can preserve the convenience of the transfer function approach for shift variant uh, sampled imaging system. And I developed a real-time measurement system and uh, demonstrate at NAB show this year. So today I will int introduce these four methods for measuring spatial resolution. The first one is the bar chart method. Uh, we usually use an in mega cycles test chart for measuring the HD TV cameras. And um, that we have the typical criterion of a contrast transfer function, a CTF, of 45% at 800 TV lines per, 800 TV lines per picture height for HD, 1600 TV lines per picture height for 4K, and 3200 TV lines per picture height for 8K. And all these uh, spatial frequencies correspond to 0 0.37 cycles per pixel for any formats. So this unit of the cycles, pic cycles per pixel is very convenient for the sample, uh, sample uh, system. And the budget enables us an intuitive assessment by visually observing the waveform monitor. However, the waveforms fluctuate due to the camera noise and have a more effect due to shift variance. And it is difficult to frame the test chart accurately, and the framing fixes in the focal length and shooting distance. And um, The, the problem is that uh, there are many uh, uh, square patterns at, with uh, different frequencies, but uh, these patches are affected by the degradation of the of average spatial resolution performance of the lens. The second one is an ISO 1233 standard edge-based method, which is called the slanted edge method. In this algorithm, um, we select a region of interest, or ROI, enclosing the slanted edge. And uh, we obtain the edge spread function, or ESF, in super resolution. And then the line spread function, or LSF, is obtained by differentiating the ESF. And the MTF is estimated over a range of special frequencies beyond the next frequency. I have an animation here. First, uh, we select an ROI, and then the project the ROI pixels along the predicted edge into the bins with the subpixel width. And then compute the average pixel value in each bin to obtain the ESF and the uh, LSF and MTF. So the knife edges are uh, framing free and relatively easy to produce, so it's easy. And um, MTF is measured from a very small region. However, the ISO method can measure only a rectangular ROI, having the near horizontal or vertical edge. And it's very difficult to adjust the focus by visual observation of the simple edge. And uh, the edge angle estimation is not robust against camera noise because the, this method takes the derivative of each line of the ROI image, which is uh, very sensitive to camera noise. And the most significant problem is that the larger slant angle introduced more negative bias into the computed MTF. 
which is a very serious problem in terms of metrology. So I, the third one I introduce is the, the ISO standard sign-based method using the sign wave pattern. This pattern uh, has uh, yeah, this pattern is uh, sinusoidally uh, modulated in the circumferential direction, and spatial frequency increases uh, the, with the, with decreasing radius. The, in, in the analysis, the image of the modulated pattern is partitioned into several pie-shaped segments like this, and in each segment, the pixels close to an arc having the sample radius are searched for, and sine curve with an expected frequency as at the selected radius is fitted into the pixel values with the least square error. And then the multi-directional MTF is determined by aggregating the estimated modulations of the fitted sine curves. So the pros are the this method can measure the multi-directional multi MTF, and it's easy to focus the test chart because the, this chart is like a GMAN star chart. The MTF matches the visual impression of the images. However, the measurable spatial frequency range is limited by both the chart size and the shooting condition. You can see that the You can see that there, there are no data at around the zero frequency because uh, uh, there are no patterns around near zero frequency in this chart. And also, and at the high, higher frequency, spatial frequencies, uh, no data is obtained. And the great care is required when framing the target and uh, no real-time measurement uh, while controlling the lens. And by very high precision is necessary when fabricating the sine wave pattern. And uh, the serious issue of this method is the normalizing. This method, is, uh, 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 this method uses the, this white patch and this black patch to to determine the modulation of the zero, zero frequency. The problem is that these patches are positioned at the peripheral area, which is uh, very sensitive to the, uh, the lighting uniformity. The last one is now a method, new method, uh, which is based on the slanted edge method, but that method it, uh, measures the multi-directional edges. So this system uh, consists of oh, sorry, this system consists of a uh, standalone application and uh, the PC with a frame mem memory board fed with an HD SDI video input. And uh, this system averages the faster input frames to reduce camera noise and improve the accuracy and the pre precision of the edge prediction. And the beam uh, locations corresponding to the ROI pixel positions are recorded once in an um, LUT lookup table. And the LUT is used again and again in the projection process to analyze the ROI images in the following frames. And the algorithm roughly estimates the, uh, an edge angle in an ROI by performing the half transform at an angular resolution of 0 0.1 degree and rotate the ROI image to orient the edge upright based on the estimated angle and uh, a small edge angle and curve are further finely estimated by fitting a two-dimensional function to ROI data. So I have the uh, animation again. First, I select an ROI. It's no, no longer uh, a rectangle. rectangle. 
the orient, orient the edge and uh, drop the low pixel into the bin, bins below. And follow the same procedure as the ISO method. Is it clear? Okay. So mm, this method is easy because it's based on the edge uh, slanted edge method. The chart is easy and the MTF can be measured from a small region. And also this method is very robust against camera noise because uh, this method doesn't take a differentiate of the uh, each line of the ROI image. Uh, so it's very uh, robust and uh, the accurate focusing in an objective manner uh, is uh, available based on the uh, real-time MTF measurement results. And uh, any unknown edge direction in an um, arbitrarily shaped ROI is acceptable. So the multi-directional MTF enables direct observation of the anisotropy. Uh, this is the multiple roids. The roid shape, uh, ROI shape is very free and uh, that can be multiple. And uh, I, I will provide some measurement tips uh, for chart. The chart quality matters. And I would, uh, the, the MTF, the laser blade is the best, but it's a little diff, um, dangerous to handle the chart. So I would recommend, recommend the chrome on glass or film uh, than inkjet printing. And uh, alignment is uh, also important. I usually use a mirror to align the camera and the chart. And also the uniformity of the illumination is important. And this software has the viewer and I can, we can apply a special color map, mapping to check the uniformity very easily. And tips for camera control. Uh, first, we set the master gain to the lowest because to, to obtain the highest signal noise ratio. And we must switch off nonlinear functions like uh, gamma, correction, and knee, etc. Because the system uh, must be assumed in a linear. And uh, to retain the image sensor linearity, we carefully control ND filter and shutter and uh, lift up the pedestal level to prevent hard creeping. And I recommend to use a remote controller for focus, zoom, and iris instead of touching the camera. And this is the startup window of the, the uh, software. And I I would uh, introduce some measurement results of uh, several cameras. Um, I used now uh, 2,000 inch 3 chip 4K, and I used the uh, in megacycle uh, chart, but uh, I used uh, um, uh, just this edge, uh, not square pattern, to measure the MTF. and. Uh, I obtained this MTF curve, very excellent curve. Um, the CTF is 51.7% uh, at 1600 TB lines per picture height. This is excellent. And this CTF values uh, can be computed by using the Coltman's formula. And uh, the the same, almost the same CTF values can be obtained by using the square pattern. It's, you can see it, it's, there is some camera noise and uh, more effect, and uh, it's very difficult to accurately read the CTF values on the web for monitor. Uh, but the CTF value is very 
closely identical to the uh, CTF value uh, measured with our method. And I, I tested uh, um, 4K lens and HD lens. And this blue line, the curve, blue curve shows the MTF when using the HD lens. And the MTF is almost identical to that of the 4K lens. But in the peripheral, uh, when measuring the peripheral edge, the 4K lens, uh, had better MTF than HD lens. So the next, uh, I measured the multi-directional MTF using this uh, uh, starburst chart and uh, defocused, and I found that the, in the perfect focus, the, the MTF is uh, uh, nearly circularly symmetric, but the for when focused in front of the target, uh, the MTF uh, became oblong vertically, and uh, in, when focused behind the target, the direction uh, has the opposite way. The next, uh, I use a different camera um, that Again, uh, 2,000 inch three chip 4K. In this case, uh, this camera has an uh, uh, optical low pass filter, so the MTF get get worse than uh, the camera A, and the multi-directional MTF uh, is uh, a little, has a little a little anisotropy here, but. Uh, uh, when we down convert the 4K to HD with a video processing unit, um, we have, uh, I, I had a uh, uh, very oblong MTF multi directional re results. And you can see that the, uh, but the MTF of the, for the vertical frequencies has no out that. Nyquist frequency, uh, which prevents the uh, uh, interest artifacts. And I compared the two results. Uh, one is ob was obtained uh, by using the, the sine wave pattern, and uh, this one is with uh, our me new method. And uh, the results are almost identical to each other. But you can see that there is no data around the zero frequency and a little noisy compared to that. And the next one is a super 35 millimeter single chip 4K camera. And uh, I, I used a single focus lens at f4. And the, you can see that this uh, uh, multi-direction MTF appears uh, uh, a little bit square because uh, that this camera has a single chip sensor with a Bayer color filter array, so green pixels are sparse in the diagonal direction. So the MTF in the diagonal direction is uh, MTF in the diagonal direction is worse than the, the those in the horizontal or vertical direction. And I, if I, if you defocus the lens, the the, the MTF uh, multi-directional MTF uh, becomes more rounded because the lens MTF is uh, uh, dominant. Dominant. So um, I. I applied a detail enhancement to this camera, and uh, I used uh, the default detail enhancement values of, of zeros. I have no idea of these uh, parameter values, but uh, if you use uh, uh, this system, you can find the very clear MTF curves. So you, yeah, it's, it, 
you can find the sp spatial resolution characteristics in a very objective way. And if you apply the uh, edge enhancement, uh, you can find uh, some uh, ringing artifact in the edge spread function, the undershoot and the overshoot artifacts. It's very easy. The last camera is now 1.7 inch 3 chip 8K camera. This camera ha doesn't have an optical robust filter on the sensor, and uh, the MTF is very, very high. That, uh, the CTF is uh, 54. 0.5 and 3,200 TB lines per picture height. And uh, I, I, I changed the aperture size from open to, to f8. The, this, uh, at f3.5, the, the MTF was the best. It's a sweet, sweet spot. And if you open the, le the iris, uh, the MTF gets worse because, uh, the because of the lens aberration. And if, if you close the uh, aperture to f3.5, you, you can reach the best MTF. And if you close the, far, the aperture further, the MTF gets worse again because of the diffraction limit. The other features in the new method um, this system uh, achieved uh, almost real-time measurement when measuring the rectangular 100 by 200 pixel ROI, which this size is recommended in a live uh, technical report. And this system uses eight times over sampling uh, instead of four times over sampling, which is used in the ISO standard. And uh, the MTF is corrected for the negative biases due to the binning and averaging procedures and uh, the discrete derivative of the edge spread function, which are not uh, included into, in the ISO standard. So, mm, okay, so I skipped that last one. In conclusion, the MTF of the camera is measurable in real time um, based on its knife edge response while continuously controlling the focus, iris, and zoom. A multi-directional MTF reveals an anisotropy resulting from the misalignment of optical axis of the imaging system, pixel arrangement of the image sensor like a Bayer Carfit array, and image processing like uh, image enhancement. The system is currently used for camera and lens selection and uh, condition checking, both at NHK and elsewhere. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much.